Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. So I hope you're enjoying a nice, warm and joyful season with your loved ones. So I would like to take a little bit of time at the end of the year to say thank you to all of you who has been supporting me over the years and months or weeks. So I opened this YouTube channel about five or six years ago and I was only posting a few times a year and, um, and then I just stopped posting until I received so many comments from um, people all over YouTube appreciating what I do. So back then, I was, to be honest, I was really shy to, um, to show my full process, drawing and painting because um, yeah, it was not easy to have a camera um, set right beside me while I was drawing and painting. And uh, of course, I was really shy to show my face in a video. And it was also very time consuming to um, edit videos. So I was hesitating to post on YouTube in the, um, in the early years. And then in 2019, about two years ago, I decided to post more frequently um, because I just feel like I really want to share my process and my passion about the idea of um, sketching in an art journal on a daily basis. And that's why I started to post more um, frequently a few times a week and um, over time it didn't really take me a lot of time to edit the videos anymore because um, I'm really used to um, using iMovie so yeah I really enjoyed the filming and the editing process after all so in the first four years or so I was only posting um, about three to four videos uh, mostly my sketchbook tours and um, just one or two process videos of me sketching in my art journal. And um, I gained about 1,000 followers over the time that I was posting just a couple times a year. And thank you so much for those early followers or subscribers. Thank you so much for your support since my early time here on YouTube. And then I think I have gained about um, 7,000 subscribers over the past one year. So last year, at the end of 2020, I only have about 2,000 subscribers. And right now I have almost 9,000. So just a couple more, just about five more subscribers and I'm reaching the 9,000 milestone. So that was a, a huge growth over this year on my channel. So thank you so much to all of you who have followed me over the past year too. Thank you so much for your interest and your appreciation of my work. So my goal of keeping this YouTube channel is to spread my love and my passion and, and share my skills of drawing and painting with people all over the world because I want um, as, be, as many people as I can to believe that everybody can draw and um, there's beauty. In, in the mundane everyday surroundings because I think the process of drawing and painting is a really nice uh, mode to slow down in life and focus on the current moment to focus on our true beings without you know being stuck with the daily hassles of life and I believe that there's a great value in the everyday when we take a little bit of time just to be with ourselves, alone with our art journal is a really um, safe and calm space for us to kind of break away from, you know, usually there are a lot of negative energies in, in the everyday life. So it's a time to produce positive energy by creating art in our art journals. So I just finished writing my master's thesis paper last month and I successfully passed my thesis defense about three weeks ago. So yeah, so I'm, I'm graduating in the spring with a master of arts degree. And now I think after you know some time of relaxation, I'm ready to move on with my life. I, I would love to continue being an artist and art teacher at the same time because um, 
I like have, having these two careers together because I think sometimes the problem as an artist can be solved by switching to the role as an art teacher. And sometimes if I have a problem as an art teacher, I can just switch back to the role as an artist and solve that problem. So it's a really nice, um, you know, to have these two roles switching switching back and forth between these two and i think i can learn a lot in this way so i'm planning to um to teach in the community centers and or in private institutes um, college or university and i would also love to continue um, teaching here online to keep sharing my skills with people all over the world so we don't have to travel very far to to see each other so for the new year, I'm going to plan for um, some online courses that we can do together on Zoom. And I will keep you updated with the information coming up. So stay tuned for a number of online classes that I will do on Zoom. And in the new year, I will keep posting on my YouTube channel as often as I can to share my process and my thoughts in our journals. And I'll try to share a bit more about my life too with you. So this year we're having a white Christmas. It was snowing all day long yesterday on Christmas Eve. And this morning the whole world is turning crystal white. So here is our Christmas tree in the dining room. And I will do a quick sketch of it and put it at the, um, at the other half of this video. And we also have another little Christmas tree in the living room beside the piano. Here is the snow scenery outside our living room windows. It's still snowing right now. But the blue sky is showing, wow. It's getting a little bit sunny, but it's still snowing at the same time. It's very cold outside, about minus five. And we also have just another little Christmas tree here over the fireplace and some little polar bears. So in my previous video, I shared about my process doing this spread of art journal. And I also filmed my process um, sketching on this page and sketching this snowy scene. So stay tuned for future videos of some of these sketches. And I also have a full process video sketching this whole page spread. And this page spread. And I did a live session, a live class on Zoom on Thursday, December 23rd. So if you're interested, you can check out the video on my coffee shop by clicking the link in the description. And before the live session, I quickly sketched the uh, moon sinking down in the west sky into the beautiful morning clouds it took me about 15 minutes and i'm gonna sketch the christmas tree on this page so i'm kind of quickly visualizing the size and placement on the page first before i start drawing so i'm placing the tree on the right hand side of this page because i want to put the balcony door on the left hand side with a snowy scene outside so I'm using these broken lines here and there to show the ap approximate position of the little branches, just to make sure I get the proportion right, just to make sure I'm not way drawing way too big or too small. Okay, and just adding a little bit inner branches inside the outside contour and just gradually tracing along the little broken lines that I made. Long and short branches. 
So I'm actually drawing pretty fast because I'm not trying to capture every single blade on the tree. That's too much details. Okay, so I'm pretty done the uh, contour outline for the left hand side of the tree. Now I'm moving on to the right hand side. And drawing the little ornamental bows. For this side, I'm not drawing any broken lines because uh, with the reference of the left hand side, it's easier to get the branches done. So the right hand side is almost a mirror image of the left hand side in symmetry, but not exactly the same. So that's why I'm not drawing any broken lines anymore. So just drawing pretty quickly, summarizing what I see instead of copying what's there. A lot of zigzag lines, little choppy lines. Add a few more detail for the left hand side. Here and there, drawing the uh, light strings. And starting to build the details for the inside. Just using very symbolic lines to suggest the form of little branches and twigs. So again, my drawing is not 100% accurate as reality, but I'm only using reality as a reference, um, using symbolic abstract lines to show the form of this Christmas tree. And now I'm darkening some areas of branches just to give more density for this tree by pushing a little bit harder with my medium tip brush pen, Etcher brand. Just to give the tree more weight by adding a lot of these solid black shadows in between. Okay, so now I'm ready to draw the balcony door. This is the frame and using these broken lines to show dimension and thickness. And another layer of frame inside. And another layer, this is the button for controlling the blind. And now I'm just drawing these layers of blinds folded up, up here. And there are a lot of horizontal lines and just relax. They don't have to be perfect straight lines because we don't have to have the hand of an architect. Okay, and that's pretty much it. And now I'm just drawing this balcony rail and then this table right outside the legs for the table a little bit snow texture and keep drawing the vertical rails of the balcony and the top curves. And now I'm starting to draw this our cherry tree overlapping behind the balcony rails. So drawing the main tree branches and just a, a few more twigs. I'm not drawing every single twig that's out there, there's too many. And it might look too messy if I draw, try to draw every single of them. And drawing this tree is very similar to drawing a leafy vegetable. So if you want to learn how to draw trees better, you can just practice with a leafy vegetable, like a cabbage or lettuce. And just switching to a thinner brush pen to draw the very basic outline of the house behind, on the other side of the street, barely seen mainly covered by these tree branches and a couple more snow textures, footprints. And that's it for the drawing. Now I'm painting watercolors, just wetting the balcony area with clear water. Now I wanna paint the house first with medium yellow to show the sunshine. Now the sun is, is coming out now and use leftover green to paint the forest behind the house. It looks very abstract. Just trying to just paint what I see. 
and the metallic table rim. There's not a lot of uh, strong colors out there. Okay, so now I'm grabbing some dark brown mixed with ultramarine blue to paint the tree branches and twigs of this cherry tree. Now I'm switching to my medium tip Sakura water brush, which has a finer tip. It's so easier to paint these thinner details. Okay, and just now just adding some leftover gray for the street to show the shadow of the snow because the snow is not perfectly white all over. Okay, and just painting the uh, balcony door frame very quickly with ultramarine blue, purple, and green. And also I'm gonna paint the living room wall with yellow ochre. And now I'm gonna paint our Christmas tree. Just wetting the tree all over with clear water so the color can spread out easily. Okay, so now I am mixing the first layer color for the for the tree, I use verdant green mixed with yellow ochre to get this kind of grass green or evergreen tree color. And just spread this color all over for the first layer. I'm gonna add the darker tones later. Just paint very loosely. Second layer. So now I am mixing burnt sienna with viridian green for this second layer, a darker tone of green. So here and there, as I see, actually most of the tree is this dark green color. And for this second layer, I also switched to my Sakura medium tip water brush so I can have more control of the smaller details. Just using very small, short, choppy brush strokes and leaving some areas from the, from the first layer uncovered. And this way I'm um, getting the depths of the tree because the Christmas tree, pretty much any other tree, there's just not one flat layer of green. If you look carefully, there are different shades and tones of green. And I would recommend painting at least two layers, one lighter green layer and a darker green layer on top, just to show the depths of the tree and the density of the tree. Much better than just one single layer of color. And now I'm just painting these red ornaments. It was red mixed with a little bit magenta and these blue and green ornaments here and there. Okay, so now I'm adding another layer of dark green tone because the second layer, after it's dried, the color tends to fade away a little bit. So now I'm adding the third layer just to intensify some dark shady, shady parts. And just another stronger magenta color for these little ornaments here and there. As you can see, I left tiny little white spots because these spherical ornaments, they're three-dimensional and they're plastic and they're very shiny. And leaving those tiny little spots are very important to uh, make this Christmas tree pop. Tiny details matter. And just last bits of brush strokes with teeny tiny marks. And just darken the uh, 
balcony door frame even more with the leftover gray. And quickly add a shadow on the wall behind the tree, just so it looks more realistic. Just a little bit. I want the yellow to stay. And metallic table rim. So the final retouch of darker brown for the tree branches. And that's it. It's finished. It took me about 40 minutes. And here is my finished sketch. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. I will try to update as often as I can every week. See you very soon next time.